I'll start on the far side and work my way in. Yvonne Brady um, is joining us today, um, and I'll let her tell you a little bit about her journey within the industry. She'll be speaking from the broker perspective, but she's actually held each of the roles on our panel, um, and she'll share a little bit of insights of where she works today at Johnson as well. Um, as well, Joe, you've met him. He is from um, Aon, and he will be speaking from the HR perspective, so giving you some insights in terms of those interview questions, as well as talking a little bit about how one gets their start and gets hired in the industry. I'll also tell you a little bit about his journey in terms of figuring out after graduation, how do I connect with an industry that allows me to do what I, what I like to do, what I'm interested in, and apply it with that business HR context he was looking for. Um, Balu Nalu is from... Um, <coughs> Independent adjuster. He is an independent adjuster. I knew that um, he will be speaking from that adjuster perspective. And we'll really, they're our um, person who we call when risk becomes a reality. Um, so they come out into the field and do a little bit of investigation and as well help us get back to um, where we were at before the incident or catastrophe in some cases occurred. Um, and he'll have a few interesting stories to tell, I'm sure, um, in addition to sharing with you insights in terms of how to um, connect with and be a part of um, the industry in his role. And certainly, um, last but not least, um, is Cecilia Subaran, and she's with TD Insurance. And she'll be speaking from the underwriter perspective. Um, she has had a very career as well, and will share sort of the transformation of her career into the insurance industry and how she's found um, really a career path that is both rewarding and um, jam-packed with things that she's interested in and loves to do. Before we get to our panelists in terms of them expanding on um, what their um, experience has been in the industry and also sharing with you their insights in terms of how to connect with a, a career in insurance. I wanted to walk you through a little bit about um, what it's all about. How many of you came in today knowing hmm, I have insurance <laughs> and I, I'd like to know a little bit more about it? How many of you currently have an insurance policy? Yes. Great. That might be tenant's insurance. You may have it um, as a result of your automobile. Some of you may be homeowners. Okay. Um, how many of you have heard of the property and casualty insurance industry? Do you know what I mean when I say that? A few of you. Great. I'll walk you through. There are three main types of insurance. Um, there's social insurance. Social insurance is one that we're probably most familiar with in terms of government programs. So our, we all have a social insurance number in order to be legally entitled to work in Canada. It's also what we use to monitor ourselves and access our social programs, like employment insurance or workplace safety insurance. There's also the life and health side, and that side actually isn't represented on our panel today, but you'll find that each of the roles that we're going to be talking about does have a place within that industry as well. Um, life and health is all about um, sort of the managing your wealth and protection, as well as um, ensuring that we have um, the insurance on our person. So health benefits should um, an accident or incident occur, or perhaps life insurance, so that our families um, are able to be financially supported in the event that we pass away. Um, the home, auto, and business insurance, so that property and casualty side, is really everything else. Um, and so that's actually what makes it pretty exciting, is because even if you look around this room, if you look around the university, if you look up in the sky and see that plane flying by, it needs insurance. And that's something that our, in, that our industry is all about. And what's great is that if you have an interest in one of those things, so the property or the um, even incident, so automobile or vehicle um, side of things, or sporting events, film, all around us, really, as I was saying, um, you're able to apply that interest and find a career for yourself within insurance, within each of the roles that we'll be talking about. Just very briefly to give you some statistics on the industry, um, there's 110,000 Canadians who work in property and casualty insurance. How many of you would be surprised if I told you that 61% of those are women? 
I was big time. Because the image that was in my head when I thought about insurance is not what I'm seeing on this panel today. Right? I was thinking, hmm, where's the old balding white guy with his briefcase of products who goes around and sells insurance? Right? It's not about that at all. That's what that's really sales is only one component. There's so much more. As well, just to give you an idea, we we're talking about diversity. The national labor market average for representation for visible minorities is 17%, and insurance is 14%. So we're about on, on par. So we have a really good representation of diversity across our industry as well. Um, when we talk about those women as well, 40% are currently in management roles. So know that uh, the glass ceiling isn't nearly as thick uh, on this side of the industry. Um, the property and casualty insurance industry represents um, the fifth largest industry in Canada, um, as well as one of the major um, contributors to Canada's financial sector. How many of you have been impacted by economic downturn or heard that term thrown around? I certainly was. Um, I know all about it. We're being an employment counselor. I saw a number of people from coming through the door. And I would say my industry experienced a bit of a boom in economic downturn, for sure. But when we talk about insurance, a lot of people thought, oh, we're going to see big time downturn. Really, relatively speaking, although we did see some impact across the industry, it wasn't nearly what was experienced across the rest of the financial sector. So you're looking at stability and variety. What I just wanted to draw your attention to is that there's this brochure. All of you should have a copy as I play out with it. In it are nine real life people who work in the property and casualty insurance industry and share a little bit of their story with you. There are nine distinct gateway roles. We're talking about three of them today, um, but we'll give you a little bit of connection in terms of um, these other roles in the course of our conversation and are happy to answer questions. We aren't talking about, and sorry Joe, the periphery roles of HR or IT or our finance departments. All of those exist as well, um, but we're talking about nine distinct career pathways within one industry um, that are, and there are hundreds more, it's just these are the sort of categories or the catch-all titles um, that exist. Um, these roles represent nine distinct sort of pathways or um, the best way to think about them is groupings of positions, right? And so you're able to really have the flexibility to have a great deal of internal mobility. You can move as Yvonne has from various roles within the industry. Um, but you can also um, find a very rewarding path even in just one of the groups. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on each of them, the broker side, definitely, that's the one that we're often most familiar with because that's who we go to to get our insurance. They help us in terms of understanding what it's all about um, and also what kinds of insurance and products we would need. The risk manager really helps us spot trouble before it happens and manage and mitigate risk. The claims investigator is an individual who's there to ensure that the claim is valid. They'll go out and they'll make sure hey, did that really go down the way that everyone's saying that it went down? And determine whether or not the claim can be processed. The underwriter determines whether or not the insurance company can accept the risk. So they'll ask a whole series of questions um, to determine, okay, so how does it all factor in? Are we able to assume that degree of risk um, in our industry? Um, the actuary, they're the problem with this guy. Really, they do a lot of statistic analysis um, they love math, they love numbers, the probabilities, and thinking about, hey, what could happen? The marketing representative, Yvonne will be able to speak to that definitely, um, but the, the marketing role um, is really understanding the products that consumers need, as well as that companies are looking to deliver to their consumers, and making sure that those products are available um, from the various insurers. The loss adjuster, um, Balu will tell you, you know, you go out and you're really part therapist, part investigator. Um, you really are dealing with people when they're at their most vulnerable. Um, but at the same time, helping them in terms of navigating the process of filing and making sure that their claim is in order and getting them back to where they were before risk became a reality. The loss control specialist, 
Um, again, that individual who's spotting trouble before it happens, but being a part of the equation in terms of what do we need to do to make sure um, that, that if loss were to happen, that it's really mitigated, that it's not um, a catastrophe, but really as minor as possible. And our appraiser is really the one who determines the value, right? So we'll, we'll usually they're a subject matter expert, so they might understand cars, they might understand fine art, they might understand real estate or property, and they go out and they talk about, hmm, this is how much this would be worth, and so when you file a claim, they really understand what your property or what your um, need is, and they're able to get it back to at the level before the incident occurred. So, those are some of the roles. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it over to the panelists. They'll describe some of the rewards. I'll interject sometimes um, to talk a little bit about um, how you might be able to get us started in the industry or resources that are available to support you along the way. We're also going to make sure that it's your opportunity to ask questions. Some of you may be already thinking about a career in insurance. How many of you are on that pathway already thinking, yeah, this is what I'd like to do? Fantastic. How many of you are thinking, maybe a career in insurance might be right for me? Awesome, so almost all of you. And how many of you are just here because it said the word career in it? <laughs> <laughs> all good, I'm really glad that you're here today and certainly we want to make sure that you have the chance to ask questions. So if you have one, please raise your hand and at an appropriate point in the conversation I'll point to you and we'll determine who on the panel might like to go first. Great, so I'll turn it over to our panelists. Yvonne, we'll start with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience in the industry today, as well as your role right now, and what attracted you initially to the industry? So sure. three kind of big questions there, but. Thanks, Trevor. Um, honestly, if you would ask me when I graduated back in 96, if I would have ended up in a career insurance, it would have been no. I think I crossed paths with one individual um, who actually chose insurance as a career, um, but I wouldn't turn back time. It's been an incredible path. Uh, my current role, I work for a insurance broker, um, Johnson Insurance Inc. I'm Rebo licensed, which means I'm a registered insurance uh, broker. Um, I can sell and service uh, insurance products to the public. Um, I'm also a certified insurance professional, so I've managed to get my uh, certified insurance, uh, my CIP designation and actually actively pursuing my life insurance license as well. So in my current role, I've been fortunate enough that my role is a combination of both the broker side, so I'm dealing directly with the public, I'm being able to advise, sell, service policies, but I'm also the marketing rep. So I have a fabulous opportunity to travel the province, I get to attend trade shows, work with a lot of our really great associations through the IBAO and the Institute and the Ambassador Program, um, and that's just promoting our product um, to the public and generating some of those inbound calls for our frontline sales teams. Um, amazing career um, that actually landed where I am today and I feel exceptionally blessed. Um, again, going back, I started my career um, with a direct writer. So that's an insurance company that primarily um, writes its own business and sells its own business. Um, started frontline sales and service um, for about the first year. Um, and really kicked some butt and won some top sales awards and you know was feeling like a high achiever. So um, after a few years, I decided that I'd like to take a kick at claims. So I moved on to another organization, um, an insurance company, and uh, worked in the claims department for probably about a year and a half. And that was basically doing um, processing home claims, auto claims, and light soft injury, soft tissue injury claims, sorry, on the accident benefits portion valuable learning experience. I tell you, it's an incredible role. If you want to learn the most about the industry, that's certain a place, certainly a place to be. So I give you kudos for that. Um, after that, I uh, moved into an actual frontline CSR Rebo licensed uh, brokerage, um, where I would actually take the calls directly from the clients and look to see what their needs were and be able to place the business with a variety of insurance companies that we had contracts with as a broker. Um, you had to know a ton of underwriting guidelines, as Cecilia can attest to, um, and you had to uh, just learn where the best place was for, uh, for a person to be to make sure that their assets were protected. Um, great, fabulous role. 
you know, I'm not sure if Trevor's going to get into compensation, but it's certainly there um, if you like what you do. Um, from there, I actually moved into an underwriting role. So I went and moved to another uh, large insurance company and took an underwriting role in the personal lines division. So it was strictly, for the most part, just home and auto, where the brokers would actually submit the applications to us. We would process and review and release those, as well as do some of the changes. You know, if you change a vehicle halfway through the year, those kinds of things. Fabulous, fabulous again. Uh, not more than a year later, I took a promotion um, as the business development manager within that organization. So again, that put me on, was the start of my traveling career and uh, put me on the road provincially, uh, Thunder Bay, Windsor, uh, St. Catharines, Ottawa, Cornwall, you name it. And uh, that was really working with the brokers to sell and promote our products um, to, the, to the consumer. Um, again, that involved attending a lot of association events, uh, a lot of institute events, really a fabulous experience. Um, did a small gint um, as a personal lines manager, uh, and that's with working with the underwriting team. Um, I realized that I certainly wasn't the type of person that could sit behind a desk. You know, just two hours for me to sit still is going to be a challenge. Um, so that was, that was a short-lived career move for me. It landed me where I am today with a fabulous organization that allows me the freedom and the autonomy to go out there and to meet the clients, but yet still actively be uh, involved in the insurance sales process, the service, and shaking hands and be involved in some of the great things that this industry's got to offer. Thanks, Yvonne. Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got your start in insurance and a little bit about your role? Sure. Um, so to begin with, uh, I'm the recruitment manager for Aon Canada. Uh, Aon is a brokerage risk management organization. So again, we are the intermediary between uh, the insurance companies and, and our clients. Um, so as you know, I'm York alumni, graduated in 99. And uh, from there, it said, oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? Um, and psych major. Any psych majors? No? Yeah? All right. So. Uh, really, in terms of career pathing, I mean, uh, you know, knew that I loved working with people, um, knew that I, I really wanted a, uh, you know, a career uh, where I could work, I could make a difference um, with people. Um, so, went to a lot of the career fairs, went to a lot of events such as this, uh, and really networked to identify, you know, what, you know, where, do, where would I fit uh, in the working world? And, uh, you know, uh, in terms of attending career fairs and whatnot, you know, I, I, I realized that I want to do what these people are, are doing who I'm meeting. And, I, you know, how do I get to recruit people and talk about, you know, all these wonderful opportunities? Um, so my path is a little bit different because I, I haven't formally been uh, an insurance professional in the industry. I started sort of in the HR path in recruitment and, uh, you know, started with a few financial institutions as a supporter for, for recruitment teams uh, and really only got my start in the insurance industry in 2008. But uh, one of the things I realized very quickly is that it is a huge industry. It, it's probably one of the most recession resistant industries uh, as the recruitment cycle. I'll get into that a little bit later. I'll tell you a little bit about that. But, uh, you know, just a bunch of great people um, in this industry and uh, in a very short period of time became the manager for, uh, for the recruitment function for one of Canada's largest brokerages. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, that's, that was a lot of uh, networking and a lot of identifying what do I want to do, what do I like to do, and then sort of tackling my, my job search to that. Um, so I'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, that's sort of my claim to fame into the industry. Great. Well, thanks so much, Joe, for sharing that. We'll definitely uh, be, be interested to hear your insights in terms of that return cycle piece as well as, you know, how do we make sure that we're able to connect and what do we need to be able to put forward as our skills attributes and, and experience for a potential employer to consider. Um, Balu. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, this afternoon, taking your time. I appreciate it. And you're investing your time into uh, looking at the careers in the insurance field. That is one of the best things you will do, ever do. And my name is Balu Nadu, as it is shown here, or, uh, Trevor has introduced me to you guys. And I have been in, in, the, in this industry for the past 20 years. I was a teacher back in 1985. And I was teaching specifically uh, insurance accounting to majority of the insurance people. And as a result of that, I had an opportunity to get into this insurance field. And since that day, I love this field and I can't work in any other field except insurance. Now, you, you might have heard yeah, lots of time, peace of mind, peace of mind. That is what goes with the insurance policy. Now, this property casualty insurance company, as Joe has clarified that, are 
personal lines. They say the personal lines means it is your automobiles and your houses. That is what is called as a personal lines. When they talk about it's a commercial lines, it basically relates to your business. That is what is all about commercial lines. Therefore, you will know the lingo of the insurance lingo. What people always talk about personal lines means is basically referring to your automobiles and your houses, whether it's an apartment or your tenants insurance and so forth. And the commercial lines coming down to your businesses which are being carried on, either is in a small industry, is in a Walmart corporation, uh, in a major corporation, so forth. Everyone would like to have a peace of mind. Peace of mind, where do they want to have a peace of mind in case something happens? A fire happens, you will never know. Uh, you may be running a business for uh, 20 years, nothing happens, but one, one fine day, or a fire can take place due to so many reasons. Now, that's the time the business owner wants to test the insurance policy, whether it holds the truth or not, whether they pay what they promised to pay. And that's what, where I come in. I help the people on a daily basis. When a person goes through, or a business owner goes through an unfortunate incident, uh, sustaining and uh, life becomes an upside down and where he needs a guidance as to how he's going to get back into the business or how the person owner or, or even an automobile owner going to get back into the pre-loss condition means that means how can he put his life back that's what pretty much therefore I help the person or either the business owner or the homeowner all the way through explaining how this is being done and making an advance payment from the insurance companies and making sure the promise of the insurance company is kept are as promised by the insurance company. That's what I come in. Therefore, I help the people on a daily basis, and I would like to see their happiness on their face with a smile. You know, you're a great guy. You helped us to get back to our feet, on our feet back again, and that's what I do. Therefore, when it comes to this one, this is a job satisfaction I get on a daily basis. When somebody tells me, you did a good job, thank you for that, thank you for putting me back on the same position where I was before, two years back, that's great. Therefore, that's what I do, pretty much. Okay, great. Great, thank you. And that actually is a really great overview of, of the role, right, is to be able to help people when they're really in their point of, okay, so what do I do here? How do I enact this policy? And how do I understand what this all means and, and what maybe I may be entitled to in terms of helping me get back on my feet? That's great. Cecilia. Hello, folks, how are you? It's afternoon. Um, I started in the business several decades ago we were new to Canada, and um, I think we were allowed $2,000 each Canadian. Uh, interestingly, the Canadian dollar was worth more than the US dollar at that time, so that was an interesting time. And um, $2,000 per person doesn't go a long way. Rent was about $160 a month. So I had to get out to get a job, and I got hired in probably close to the lowest position in an insurance company. I was pretty, I thought I was pretty smart at that time, but you know, the need to get a paycheck you know, overruled any of my ambitions. So I did a job and after a couple of weeks, and I don't recommend anybody to do this, I went to my manager and asked for time off and he asked why and I said, I have a job interview someplace else. <laughs> don't ever do that. But I did and he said, why would you want to leave this job? And I said, well, I think I'm a little smarter than, you know, doing this little job here. And that afternoon I was promoted with 25% increase in income. Try that today, you'll get fired. But anyway, <laughs> it did happen for me, but that was a long time ago in another um, a whole deck, a whole millennium, you know, away. Um, I did well in that job. It, that job was called auto rating. That job has since been replaced by computers because rating of a system is you just put um, attributes of a client and a computer will tell you instantly what that premium is. So I stayed in that job and I moved on to a couple different companies. What I find interesting in my career, and I don't know if I'm the black widow of the industry, but every company I've left has been sold. My friends say to me I destroyed them, but I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that is the reality. But when I started the industry, there were 400 insurance companies. There's just over 100 now. So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, combining of companies, et cetera. I moved on and, um, Fast forward to the mid 80s, I had you know, developed my skills. Um, I did it by being really hard working. Um, I, I didn't know a lot of Canadian geography, so you had to learn it really, really quickly. In those days, there was no government insurance in the 70s. If you were an underwriter, I would underwrite for uh, British Columbia, um, you know, Atlantic, wherever you got a policy with Quebec policies, and in French too, while I didn't speak much of the language at that time. 
So that was the way it was. And, um, but then fast forward to the 80s, I wanted to get into marketing. And I applied and applied, because all the people I talked to said, you're a good at writer, we want you to come out and talk more. And couldn't get in there, because it was a man's world. So I applied twice, got turned down, and watched people from lower positions, there were males that were moved up. And uh, Trevor is right, when I came into the industry, the word underwriter meant bald and white-haired. It really did. But um, on the third try, the posting was there for a marketing position. Both people had left. And I did not apply, because I thought, this is not for me. And my manager at the time said to me, um, why is it you're not applying? And I said, well, I don't think I'm cut out. I'm not going to get it. And he said, apply. And I got that job. And it was some of the most exciting times. I can understand what Yvonne says. It's a lot of fun, but you better know what you're talking about because you go out to people who own million dollar accounts and you, they don't want to see you to have coffee. They want you to know, how do you get me involved in making more money? How can I upsell my account? What do you have in products? So you need to have a good bag of tricks to go out there because if you don't do well, they'll call you and ask, please don't send that person out again because if you're not good. So one of the things you have to be in this business is very good at what you do. I don't recommend you go in it to see what happens. I think you should read up a lot about it. There are places you can find out. Like the Insurance Bureau of Canada has many hyperlinks to tell you where to go. And if you have the good fortune of uh, getting an interview beyond the HR level and you reach to a risk manager or an underwriter or claims, read up about what's going on in the industry. I always say when uh, I turn on the news, um, I have at least 25% of the chance I've insured that person. Um, you may remember the police shot the guy in the rear end a couple of years ago. That's my guy. Um, you know, that, that was my guy. What was interesting about it, he was in jail and he was calling the adjuster saying, I can't come out to see you. And it's just, you know, that's some of the funny parts that we laugh about in this industry. Um, there are things like, what do you do um, when a client is sitting in his home in Scarborough and a gunshot flies through the window?
for each of the roles specifically, you can find a list of the skills and attributes on our website, and that may be a good starting point in terms of just understanding, okay, so I'm interested in this, is this really a fit for where my skill sets are, or the ones that I need to grow in order to be successful? Um, the other question that I wanted to just focus on with the panel is some tips for success in terms of finding employment within the industry. Um, one of the things that I certainly see a lot of and, and know to be true is that networking is pivotal. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about your experiences with that, perhaps in your answer, and then some other tips that you think um, could, could be beneficial in terms of finding employment in the industry. Well, I think Cecilia mentioned it earlier. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with starting down here and earning your wings. I did, Cecilia did, um, so that's certainly not something that should be viewed upon negatively in any stretch of the imagination. Um, again, I think in some of my notes when I was posed with that question by Trevor, networking was like at the top. Um, there is just a ton of opportunity to go out and get that and you'll come across some really great mentors in your path, um, you need to take advantage of those. Meet as many people as you can, shake as many people's hands as you can, attend as many events as you can, trade shows, get involved. Our industry has so many associations and societies, etc. It's just, the networking is key, absolute key. I think you could probably travel across the province and uh, meet an insurance broker in some of some pretty remote communities. And if you said my name, they would probably know who I was because I've shook those hands, I've crossed those paths, I've attended those events. Um, I've been pretty much everywhere for the past seven years across this great province. So that, that for me is huge. And it's certainly a community, right? That's Absolutely. one of the things that I just yeah. highlight as well in this conversation is that, you know, it's that 110,000 people, although yes, that seems like a large number, it's actually a pretty close-knit group. Oh, um, yeah. It seems it's to run into each other, other in the strangest of places. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walking to the airport, That's like, right. hey, yeah. how's it going? <laughs> really connected and then you have the opportunity again just to shake that hand and reconnect with people. Joe. Yeah, I think we talked a little bit about networking. I mean, I, I can't stress how important that is. Attending career fairs, um, you know, uh, getting to know who's, a, who's going to those career fairs, making yourself uh, you know, known, introducing yourself. Um, we talk about networking and a lot of people are like, well, what is networking specifically? It, it's that. Um, it's technology. I mean, we're in a great age of technology right now where, you know, there, we have a, the social media. I mean, how many of you have a LinkedIn account? You should all have a LinkedIn account. <laughs> a LinkedIn account, I think, right now is, uh, is, is a very important thing to have. It will connect you with so many different alumni groups, uh, in, in companies, uh, people. Uh, I can't tell you how many candidates find me through LinkedIn and introduce themselves to me through LinkedIn. Um, you know, they find out that I'm the recruitment manager. I'm out there. And, uh, you know, I'll get resumes through there. And, and it's a really innovative and great way to get yourself known um, as someone who's seeking, an, uh, you know, a position in the insurance industry. Um, making a phone call. I mean, doing your homework, finding out who are those companies, who are, the, who are the recruiters in those companies, and how can I get in touch with them directly. Um, so it's really digging deep to, to identify and get yourself known out there. And those are some of the specific things you can actually do, um, which, and uh, you know, how do I know that? Candidates have actually done that, uh, you know, with us in terms of, um, you know, expressing their interest for candidacy in, in a position. So uh, go out and get it is really what I'm trying to say, if you want it. Absolutely. One of the things that we can tell you is that 80% of all positions are found through building relationships. Yep. Right? So it's planting those seeds, shaping the palms, getting involved in professional associations early, um, attending conferences. You can even attend a conference as a volunteer, right? And, and you get to attend for free and have the opportunity to showcase um, a little bit about yourself and, and get to know who are some of the leaders in the industry. And you know that everyone who's presenting at a conference loves what they do, otherwise they wouldn't be presenting there, mm -hmm. right? So you have the chance to really get um, connected that way and as well build some great um, relationships that you may be able to leverage down the line. Yeah, uh, so oh, just, just on that note too, I think that it's, it's really important. I'm sure everybody in this room has a connection to an insurance broker, an insurance representative, sure. if not yourself, via your family members. You know, if you actually step up and show that interest and, and take that extra few minutes to introduce yourself and ask a few questions and just do a short Q&A, you know, if they happen to be talking to their own people in the industry, and, and you know, for example, I know my organization is looking at hiring some frontline staff, and Joe mentioned that as well. 
So, you know, that's a good opportunity to just keep those conversations going to be able to get yourself in the door. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah, in my case, uh, networking is a major important factor in my life, uh, getting to know the people. I work with the brokers, I work with the contractors, I work with the engineers. In, in every part of the insurance field I work with, then the majority of the time I get to know them. And uh, I'm also a teacher. I teach insurance courses on a part-time basis, being a part of the Insurance Institute of Canada. I've been doing that for almost about 10 years now. And the majority of the students will uh, come to me, and I'll probably newly uh, coming to the industry, are probably graduated from a community college and so forth, looking for jobs. And they will, I will simply ask them to send their CVs to me, and I will forward them to appropriate people. Because I have a links, and I've got a connections. As Joe said, if you're on LinkedIn.com, then you get a lot of contacts. And, and the networking is created for you. And you are simply able to forward your, uh, your CVs and so forth. And with the recommendation and all person has been my student, or this person is known to the other uh, insurance professional, either to the brokers, uh, Sicily or Ivan, and so forth, then it makes the recommendations. As the Trevor pointed out clearly, that the networking is a key factor in getting any jobs in the insurance industry. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm hearing that networking word a lot, which is, you know, we knew that to be true of career connections, just from That's our experience right. and communicating with you. Um, but certainly, I think, um, know that building that relationship is key. Cecilia? I found in, uh, from my time, I, uh, there's nothing wrong with cold calling. The one thing about cold calling though, if you're going into a neighborhood or in your own neighborhood, if you saw ABC brokerage office or insurance office and you wanted to find out about it, present yourself in the most corporate way that you can manage and go in there. This is not the time to show your tattoos. The insurance business is very, very corporate and they don't want to see any of it. So it, just keeping that sort of thing in mind, um, go and ask, ask questions about it. If you're, you know, presentable enough and you speak nicely about it, chances are you can get it. I know in my own experience, um, when I was in marketing, there was this office I really wanted to hire. And the first visit I had, um, the owner told me about 15 rotten things about my company. But I came back a month later, and he told me about 10 rotten things. And I came back a couple more times, and then I thought, I'm not going anymore. And he called me, and he <coughs> said, can you come out? And I got the contract. But it's just being there, being present, letting them see the best side of you. Uh, talking, sometimes you know you perhaps feel, I have no insurance experience, I have nothing to offer. Yes, you do. If you own a car, you own an apartment, you have stuff to ask about. Start asking questions. And ask questions that are true to the information you're interested in. Because if you get that glazed look when you get an answer, you're not going to connect. So it's having that intelligence information. Go on the. Um, you guys are living in the best time ever in terms of, um, you know, the information highway. In my time, when we wanted a job, you walked to the employer next door on University Avenue and hoped for the best, or you got a headhunter who had all 15 of your friends there. Today, you can go on the internet and find out all the hot jobs that are going on, and you probably have a good chance. The um, fairs, the job fairs are excellent. I know our company hires them all the time and we get good, good resources. And don't worry that you're new and you don't know anything about it. I have picked, hand-picked people who've come in new and I saw that spark in them and worked with them. And I've seen most of the people that I've mentored have moved up into leadership roles. So show your spark, go in there and be a keener, work hard, figure out what it is the company that you're going to want. Don't worry if it's in a lower position. My story might have been silly for that time, but it did work for me, didn't it? So you've got to go in and you have your own style. Let that style drive who you are, and your personal interests or your major should only be in, you know, a benefit to wherever you go. Great, that's actually really great advice in terms of thinking about, okay, how many of you will do engage an employer and present myself in the best possible light? How many of you have your 30 to 60 second sort of pitch all ready to go for next week's career fair. Oh, so some of you need to go to the career center. Because <laughs> it's one of the things that I've found, certainly, each time I've done a lot of hiring in the past as well, and when we've had the chance to really connect with a candidate in that, you know, they can tell us what they're looking for, they can articulate a little bit about our business and understand what we're about, they can showcase how their skills and experience fit that, and then talk a little bit about, hey, are there any opportunities for someone with my strengths and skill sets? 
that really gets us to a place of a really good starting point for that conversation, more so than do you have a job, right? And we want to get to a place where you're telling us a little bit more about exactly. um, who you are and where, how you see yourself fitting into our organizations. I actually have an example of that. Many years ago, I remember HR came to me and said, we have this nice young man, he's, you know, he didn't get the job someplace else in a company. I'm hiring for an underwriter, would you take a look? So I thought, he doesn't have any experience, you know, I don't have time to train, I need experience. She said, oh, please give him a chance, you know, his father passed away and all that. So anyway, um, what, what impressed me about him, he had done six of the credits in the Insurance Institute, they weren't $500 then. There were only hundred dollars then, Trevor. I know. <laughs> so in those days, and this young man paid for those credits on his own and passed the courses. And he presented it to me in an interview. He was a Zamboni driver, had nothing to offer me except the six credits. So anyway, I, I, I did like him in the interview, and he said a lot of good things. So I said to him, um, "We'll meet for a second interview." And I did offer him the job. Back in the nineties, there's no nothing like casual days. That was not a word. You, worked, you came to work in a business suit every day. So he said to me, um, how do you dress for your office? And I said, you look fine. And he wear, was wearing a suit. <laughs> and when I got to know him, he said, it wasn't my clothes. <laughs> I for the interview. So that was all he had. And he turned out to be the most wonderful young man. He's done well and he's still in the industry today, doing very, very well. So, you know, those are some of the nice things. And he had nothing to offer but that drive and the spirit that he, and he showed me he was willing to take his chance, you know, moving forward. We talk about nine entry points into the industry and sort of the ways that you can start in education is one of them, we talked about that. But enthusiasm is one of the final ones that we talk about. And enthusiasm, if, you, if you're passionate about something and you can really demonstrate to people, you know, this is what I want to do um, and this is how I might be able to help your organization, it really does go a long way with employers. So certainly know that yes, education, experience, um, a little bit of knowledge about the industry certainly is a, is a good thing. But your enthusiasm really is the thing that puts it over the top. Um, we like to see it all across the board and, and know that it's an industry that you'd like to commit to. Um, I want to turn it over to you just so I know that there may be some burning questions and we'll, we'll go back to some of our ones around rewards and, and maybe some, some other tips for success in finding employment. Um, but are there any questions from you that you're hoping that you wanted to get answered today? Yes? Why do some of my jobs here so far? It seems like the university career centers have uh, been good for terms of job postings, but um, the actual firm websites that I've encountered don't have a terrible amount of postings. And um, you know, nowadays you hear that the vast majority of jobs are actually on postings. Um, at least that's what I've heard most times. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the best way as a graduate to go about uh, finding obviously now we're going to be this big, but uh, any other recommendations? Two. Joe, did you want to start speaking to that? Yeah, I, I mean. Uh, like I, I like I said, I think we talked a little bit about the whole networking piece. Uh, we talked a little bit about some of the technology we can use now in terms of LinkedIn and that sort of thing. Um, it really comes down to identifying what you want to do and researching which organization you want to do it with and really finding out who are the key people in that organization or who are going to help you get your foot in the door. So, you know, who is it in, in the recruitment teams or who is it in, uh, in, on the hiring management teams? Um, you know, that I can introduce myself, uh, whether it be just a simple phone call to say, you know, I'm a recent grad who's very interested in working in this industry and I've heard great things about your organization, I, I would love to be a part of your team. You know, I, I do get those calls once in a while out of the blue and, you know, it, it, as, as a recruitment manager, you stop and think about the resourcefulness that it took for these individuals to find out who you are and, and not go through the whole, you know, monster workopolis type of uh, in thing. Um, you know, we're, we're sort of moving away from that. Um, we're moving more into a networking age. Um, so it's, again, I, I, you know, I can't stress enough how important it is to really uh, be innovative with it and, and to do your homework and to do your research and really under, identify what you want to do first and not just look for a job, but go look for something that you know, is going to make you, in the end, uh, you know, happy and, and have a fulfilling career. Hopefully that helps a little bit. 
I know, I know. I got one job, and the manager of one of the companies I worked for called me at the company I was at to ask for information on a file we were doing. So I gave him the answers, and I said, "By the way, are you hiring?" He says, "Yes, you're interested." And I was hired the next week. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's just you take a moment and you take a chance. But another thing I found is um, some of our uh, volunteers in the company. If you have a good, you know, you're interested in actuarial or whatever it is you're interested in, and you can get someone in a position of, you know, responsibility to get you in that door, use something different because I don't know how many, you know, people apply for the same jobs. So you have to distinguish yourself on it because I know a lot of people say, oh, I sent out a thousand resumes, no answers. So you've got to find, a, you know, a different line to get yourself in the door. Yeah, and don't apply to every single job <laughs> that an organization has posted. Really pick and choose your battles yes, yes. Um, and really, really, you know, have a game plan when you're looking at employment. Have, have a real game plan. Um, you know, these events are here to help you understand, you know, uh, where in the industry you want to focus your time. I mean, I think you've all taken a first really good step and that's coming here today to find out a little bit more about exactly. what we do as professionals um, and, and some of the tools that you can use at your disposal. Um, so, yeah. I think, um, sorry, I think sorry. another thing, um, if, if anybody's ever been out there, but the, uh, in the broker world, from that perspective, and brokers work on a, a national level, but take Ontario, for example, they're very community driven. Mm -hmm. You'll see them yes. out there leading yes. nonprofits. You'll see them out there getting involved in the food kitchens. You'll see them getting involved in the Humane mm -hmm. Society. That's true. I guarantee you, you will cross paths with those people who will recognize you if you take the opportunity to introduce yourself if you get involved in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Absolutely, and, and that's one thing that I can say about the industry is that um, they are incredibly corporately socially responsible um, in terms of the amounts of donations that are given by the industry, but also the community involvement that Yvonne was alluding to in terms of what people are giving in terms of their time and energy back to the communities in which they live. Um, often we say that of professionals who love what they do, they have that extra energy to be able to go out and give back. Um, I think that that's fantastic. Um, one of the things that Joe alluded to as well in, that, in this conversation was having a game plan. And as a career counselor, I can speak to the importance of that enough, uh, particularly with the insurance industry. If you sort of don't narrow it down to a few key roles or a few key areas that you're interested in, what can happen is it's like playing soccer without a goal net, right? Is that you're just out there kicking the ball around and you hope that someday it's gonna go between those elusive posts and the wider they are. You know, yeah, it seems like the more opportunity there, there would be, but actually a really focused resume or a really focused conversation can really help an employer, even a networking contact, decide how they can most help you, right? Like if you can name a couple of job titles versus, well, I can really do anything in a variety of sectors and administration, healthcare, like all of a sudden it's like I don't know where to help you, I don't know where to point you. Whereas if you go to the, like if you're on the internet and you use specific search terminology, all of a sudden Google is a lot more effective. It's the same with your network. They're going to be a lot more effective if they know exactly where to point you um, and, and how to help you connect. I think that's true, Trevor, because if you take a look at yeah, two different roles, underwriting and claims, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know what an underwriter was. I had no idea what they did. I had no idea how it fit into the organization. I didn't know if a broker did that, a company did that, who pays who. I didn't have a clue. Um, so that's a very unique role in itself. So you, I think you have to understand the role. And same with claims. And they're two entirely different skill sets um, on what you choose to do. I was a great underwriter. I was a crappy claims adjuster. <laughs> you know, and that's my reality. Um, so I had to zone in on what exactly it was, who I was as a person. I had to look at my own personal attributes. Um, as far as being a personal lines manager, I was a terrible personal lines manager. I was great with the staff, but you couldn't keep me tied down to a desk for eight hours. Yeah. So I had to find my place in the industry and pick and choose those battles, just as Trevor had mentioned. So it's really key to kind of research that particular role to know exactly where it is you'd like to focus your efforts on and your application process. Well, the two, the two important questions you have to ask yourself is, you know, uh, what do I like to do and where do I want to do it? Uh, and once you have a, a solid answer to those two questions, I think, you know, uh, being able to tailor your, um, what, what you've discovered from those questions in, into, you know, where you want to actually focus your efforts in terms of where you want to apply. Absolutely. Absolutely. My 
I've, I've, this is just my observations. I found the companies that pay less for starting jobs are better training you because they have seem to have a bit more resources. Those that pay you higher will expect you to perform at a higher level, and that's a reasonable expectation. So don't, my message to you would be, if you get that lower paying job, don't worry about it, you'll be chalking up experience. And in a year, you're ready for the higher paying job because you now have the experience. So don't mind if you are in it. Don't be the one in the office griping about, geez, I only make you know, so and so. It's, it's that experience that you need because that's so valuable in the first years you're out there. That's true. I remember my first role, and, and uh, they paid for six weeks of training, paid for all my licensing, paid for my certified insurance professional mm -hmm. uh, courses, uh, paid me to when I earned my diploma. Um, and you know what? Kudos to them. I, you know, just took it and ran with it from there, mm -hmm. and then decided what my path was going to be. And it gave me the opportunity to discover Open. the different roles yes. within the industry. Awesome. Yeah, and I think that that's one thing that we know for sure is that the industry is very supportive of professional development, lifelong learning, and watching your career grow. Um, advancement happens pretty darn quickly in the industry, and it's um, like in relative terms. And it's nice to to know that even if I start out in one area, that I can advance to that ideal state um, relatively early in my career. Are there any other questions that are kind of on your mind? I know that one gave us some good food for thought. Yes, at the back. Uh, question, in terms of ages, what makes a, a successful agent different from a non-successful agent? Oh. Perspiration? And how important are they to the industry? Uh, a broker agent um, is exceptionally successful if they choose that. Again, it's a lot of hard work, it's referrals, it's networking, it's community involvement, but I tell you, it can be exceptionally, exceptionally lucrative. Mm -hmm. Some of them are driving around in some pretty big boats right now and driving Planes around in some pretty fancy yeah. cars. Yes. Um, their compensation structure is primarily a commission based. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you to drive that home. Um, and it's out, up to you to get your message out and shake those hands. Truly, that's what is a referral based operation. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's sort of how I, t when I talk to students about, you know, in the industry, it's really, again, and I go back to it always, it's what do you like to do? I mean, on the brokerage side, it's very much a relationship building, business development. Are you that salesy type individual? Do you like hitting targets? Do you like going out there meeting with people? Um, more on the, you know, on the underwriting side, are you more analytical? Do you like to pick apart things? Do you like to, you know, analyze and, and, and make, uh, you know, make decisions? I mean, they're two different, very different skill sets, but again, I mean, two very lucrative, lucrative careers. And when we talk about the broker agent, I just wanted to clarify, brokers themselves would, like a brokerage, right. would represent several insurance mm -hmm. companies and have a variety of products. They may have a few that they represent, but they would develop those relationships on the back end. An agent would work specifically for one company or organization right. and sell their products. Um, in terms of success, like absolutely, I think that all the things that um, both Joe and Yvonne alluded to in terms of that networking, that relationship development, as well, entrepreneurial spirit, right? Just having the energy so. to get up and go and build, build your client base, build your relationships, and being willing even to take a little bit of risk yourself um, in terms of uh, making it happen. I've seen broker agents or uh, brokers start from scratch. I've meant 18 hour days for a long time, but once you get into the rhythm and you get that portfolio moving past a certain plateau, you can live off the commissions but you always have to grow, you always have to develop it. But as Yvonne says, it's, you know, if you're successful, you can be quite successful. And, and typically in, 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 our, in, in my industry anyway, which is on the brokerage side, um, you know, we talk about getting your start. Uh, a lot of the positions where, where you get your start in the brokerage is assistance to the brokers, assistance to, and they have that on the underwriting side as well. Um, and that's where you learn the ropes uh, and you support some of the senior brokers, senior account managers from an administrative perspective and really get your feet wet in terms of the nuts and bolts of what happens in the industry and sort of work your way up from there. Um, so usually the positions that, uh, that are available anyway in, in, uh, in, 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 in our business and in, in the brokerage side are that of you know, entry level, 
assistant roles that will eventually lead to sort of succession planning into those broker account management sort of risk control those sorts of roles um, so that's really where you get your start you get your start uh, you know uh, supporting some of the senior leaders um, learning the ropes learning from some of the best in the industry and uh, and going from there so that's where you necessarily would probably get your start and that's true, that's a very good point, uh, succession planning. There's a lot of really successful brokers out there mm -hmm. who are looking forward to retirement, all of a sudden have a portfolio or a book of business, have no idea what to do with it. There's opportunities out there for you to meet those people, mm -hmm. to be able to purchase a portion yes. of their book, their renewal premiums, and be able to walk into an earned income right off the bat versus you know, an assistant started salary mm -hmm. role, especially if you're dealing with maybe just more of the small independent brokerages that you might find throughout Ontario outside of the GTA, right. if you choose that lifestyle, which is the flexibility that our industry allows you as well. Um, so there's a ton of opportunities to look at those succession planning um, opportunities. Absolutely, Definitely. and that's a great lead into my next uh, point is around the industry itself. 49% um, of our industry currently identifies as a member of the boomer generation. What does that mean? They're moving towards retirement. Uh, within the next five to 10 years, there are some companies that are forecasting up to 40% of their workforce will be moving out of the industry. What does that mean for you? Tremendous opportunity, right? So what we're hoping is as you're thinking about, okay, so what are my pathways? How can I get there? Is that you're realizing, you know, if you build these skill sets, if you build the relationships, there's a world of possibilities that really awaits you in terms of finding a position. And companies are, and, and Joey can back me up on this a little, they're a little nervous. They're wondering, yeah. like, how do we, how do we build a, a strategy to make sure that people are becoming attracted to the industry and leveraging skill sets so that they can become um, successful relatively quickly um, upon graduation? Yes? How hard or easy is it to in an organization so first we'll talk to internal <coughs> mobility how is it easy is it to move between roles well I've been fortunate um, that um, I've been pretty easily in both um, so I've worked for quite a few organizations I like to think that I'm well balanced I think is how I uh, label it on my resume, and um, and that's both internally and externally. Um, but what that is is I managed to build some really great relationships um, with each organization that I worked with. Never burned a bridge because that you'll always cross their path again. I guarantee that. Um, and again, if you show the drive and the determination, it all goes back to the core values that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Then you earn that respect um, to be able to move upward, onwards, and outward. And our industry is so vast and there's so many opportunities and there's so many great people that you're going to meet that are going to recognize that in you um, if you present yourself that way. And the world is, is honestly, is your oyster in this industry. It's so vast. It, it, that's definitely true. Joe, do you want to talk about yeah, mobility a little bit? Uh, in terms of, I mean, I think what Yvonne was saying was, uh, you know, it's such, a, it's such a big industry, but it's such a small industry, so you're, you're made or broken by your reputation in this business. Yes, um, and I think, you know, if, you know if, if you are successful in this industry, um, you know, I think promotion and those sorts of things will come to you very easily and very naturally, um, but you could destroy your career just as easy. And that's, you know, one thing that, not to scare anybody, but you know, that's something to be said of the industry. It's a very tight-knit group. Um, and uh, you know, we have a lot of tight-knit relationships in the industry. So being successful uh, only means that uh, you know, your, your profile is heightened, right? Um, in terms of internal mobility, yeah. I mean, it's really just about, again, identifying what, what your next role wants, and what you want your next role to look like. Um, so identifying your current role, working with your current manager to identify what, are, what do you feel some of my core skill sets are and where do you think I'd be good in terms of my next move, um, in terms of making any lateral moves. You might try something out in the, in in the industry and say, you know what, I can't stand doing this, but you know, I, I want to try something else. You know, maybe it's not broking, maybe it's claims, maybe it's underwriting. Uh, we've had, I meet, like I said, I meet insurance professionals all the time from uh, other brokerages and from, from carriers who are the insurance companies who make that switch. Um, you know, and underwriters who want to come onto the brokerage side and do very, very well and vice versa. Um, so it's really all about sort of 
again, it comes back to you know, doing what you want to do, doing what you like doing and under, uh, identifying um, where in this industry match up with, with what you like to do. One yeah, of the, yeah, just as a sorry. great example, sorry, in my first underwriting role, I started on a six month contract. I took a risk because that's where I wanted to be was on the corporate end. I took a risk. I took a six month uh, contract junior underwriting position. And uh, by the time of that and end of that six months, I was permanent full time and I went from a junior role up to an intermediate and into a senior role in a six month term. I worked my butt off for it. Yeah. I shipped a lot of hands. I found a great person internally who supported that move upward. That's all it takes. And that's the other thing. Don't be afraid of contract positions. I mean, uh, that's, that's your opportunity to test the job out just as much as exactly. the organization right. is testing yeah. you out for that time period. So don't be afraid of those six month, one year contracts. Um, you know, it's, it's a great foot in the door. One of the things our company does is if someone says, I'm interested in claims and they're on the sales side, what they've offered them to do is on your own time, you may job shadow someone else. So for instance, um, we work eight to eight, Monday to Friday and Saturdays. Um, so if you wanted to sit with the adjuster on your own time, you make an arrangement and HR you know, helps to make it happen. And you determine if you want to go you know, into that role. And most people who've done the job shadowing have moved over. So again, it comes back to what are you willing to do to help yourself get there? In terms of promotion, um, you, uh, you know, companies want to promote their stars or you've got to have something that's dis distinguishing that makes your leadership want you in a higher role. And that's what you've got to, I've, I've always felt, you know, high integrity, clean hands are things. As uh, Joe said, don't burn a bridge because, you know, it's that thing where nobody gives references, but if somebody says, do you know Joe? Uh, I can't talk about that. We don't talk about that. <laughs> it's different to, yeah, Joe's a great guy. That's a mm -hmm. reference. So yep. it's, you know, it's those subtle things that do happen. So think about what it is you want to do and put what you've got into it. Any other questions out there? One that was certainly on my mind was just what you find to be most rewarding about the industry. Um, we can talk a little bit about compensation. We can also talk about some of the other rewards that you get from, from being in the business. Um, yeah, you know what, truly, and I, I honestly believe from an HR perspective, um, that everybody is motivated differently. For me, it's not financial. Um, am I well compensated? Absolutely. Do I have a great life? Absolutely. But for me, that's not what it's about. I would forego the 2 or 3% rate increase, um, annual rate increase, to have what I get back every day. So what motivates me is, you know, that successful sale, that shaking a hand, that great job, um, that bang on, that invite to that special event. Um, for me, that's truly the definition of success. It's more of those relationships that you build as you go through your career. So for me, that's, that's and I believe honestly that that's really the core value that's brought me where I am today. I see a lot of people focused on compensation money. Trust me, the industry has it mm -hmm. to offer if you work for it, but you're only gonna earn that if your reputation is in place for hard work, drive, um, equaling success, and then everything, the money will follow naturally along with that. Very basic concept. Great. Yeah, I think out of all the, all the insurance professionals I meet on a daily basis, I think money is the last thing that is, this, you know, the last thing that they talk about when I ask them, you know, what, what motivates you in this industry? What do you enjoy about your job? I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, I like helping people. I like helping people sleep at night. Uh, that's what that's what we're all about. I mean, in terms of the whole risk mitigation, in terms of what we do. So, um, you know, if you like, you know, having that client-centric approach, if you like helping people, this is a great industry to be in. It can be very rewarding. Um, and again, like I said, you can build a great reputation in this industry as well. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's what I I hear from from the people I speak to all the time. Absolutely, and I think um, as you're saying that, in terms of what what motivates you, what helps you to, to be a part of it. Helping is one of the main Helping is one of the main things. Insurance professionals are listing, and you know, when you think about the industry, you would think, is it really a helping profession? And I would say absolutely it is. Absolutely, it's helping people get that, as you say, peace mm -hmm. of mind. Yep. Value for you, rewards in the you industry. Know, uh, money is not everything. As everyone said, Joe said, Yvonne said, uh, if you work hard, uh, the money follows you uh, very well. 
and it is the honesty and the integrity and the hard work you put through into your on a daily basis uh, into your work uh, that takes you to uh, great that makes you to get a, in a great compensation uh, it ranges say between i can't tell you any numbers but it ranges between say 50k to all the way to 150k uh, being an independent myself yes i have the uh, capability to earn that kind of income uh, there's no doubt about it and I need to do the hard work. At the same time, I have to, uh, as uh, Joe has clearly pointed out, helping everyone or helping someone else on a daily basis. That's what brings you a lot of happiness to you and in doing a fulfilling a, and a good job done on a daily basis. And it brings the rewards later on. And just to touch, uh, what I wanted to mention as well is the learning. Um, you learn so much in this industry. You learn on a daily basis. Um, you know, some of the clients you deal with, especially on the commercial side, right. when you start getting into, you know, environmental um, and, uh, you know, kidnap and ransom. I mean, these are some very interesting, interesting things in fields you're getting into. So um, the top two would probably be the helping of people and, and the learning, the constant learning. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. At this stage in my career, I'm a boomer and probably will work maybe most of 10 years. So I find the most reward comes to me now for getting the next generation ready. I am a CIP co uh, instructor as well. And I find, you know, getting people in, my students in a classroom, I'm able to coach them on how we, how we get here, why are things done the way they are, uh, basic things like even a vehicle inspection, how did that happen? And many of the things I find it's rewarding to me personally by getting that next generation ready because I also had a benefit of many good people, you know, passing it on to me. And I find that that is a, there was a time when money was very, very important to me. But as you move on in your life, it, you find it's not as much important. I know none of us here would work just for a thank you. Yes, we need a paycheck. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, you know, it's not everything because even if you had the high level paychecks and if you think in the news, of many, many successful people with an awful lot of money, they do not have that, you know, good feeling of doing well. And I think it comes back to that very basic level of, you know, being good at what you do, being recognized and respected for it, and passing it on. And at this stage, that's what works for me. And what's great about what you've heard is really the full spectrum of a career in insurance, right, in terms of being able to take something from the, you know, maybe the financial things that you're thinking about early on in your career. This is, is this going to be a good industry for me? Is this going to have the variety that I'm looking for? Is this going to have the, the advancement that I'm looking for, the breadth that I'm looking for in my career? Right through to how am I able to give back? How am I able to contribute to the learning and development of others? How might I be able to, in my later years of my career as well, be able to mentor and, and work with individuals in terms of moving through into their own career path that is equally rewarding? Um, one piece that I just wanted to highlight for you is that a combination of variety and stability is actually very rare in a sector. Um, and at the height of the recession, so in December of 2008, um, there was actually an increase in insurance positions of 12,200. For the rest of the labor market, in most sectors, it was a loss of, on average, of 34,000 sector, or 34,000 jobs. I can tell, Aon hired 342 people in 2009 across the country. So just to give you an idea. And I think we had uh, four acquisitions uh, which uh, required that staff to come aboard too. Crawford has hired close to about 200 uh, employees last year. I think we hired, we hired so many, um, I can't even, it's in hundreds. Uh, each year we hire them and we're just growing beyond. Um, when I joined the firm, um, 11 years ago, my responsibility was 160 million. It's now way over 600 million. So that's the kind of growth we've seen. Always need it, folks. Always need insurance. And also know that there are jobs definitely within the sector um, as you move forward in terms of thinking about your next steps. Um, what I'd like to do is allow each of the panelists just to give some closing thoughts and anything else that you just wanted to round out in your in what you'd like to communicate to the group here today. Um, as well, um, if you have any closing questions, I'll make sure that you have the chance to ask those before we go into a little bit of mix and mingle and networking. Yvonne, did you want to start us off? Sure. Um, you know, in closing, I, I don't know how to describe it because, again, going back to when I started in this industry back in 96, I certainly 
when I graduated, I did not even think that, that insurance was a career um, and where I'd be. Um, so here I sit uh, a few years later, I'm not gonna say many, a few years <laughs> later, and uh, I've had an amazing, amazing, incredible career path, met some uh, great, fabulous people, reaped the benefits through the, the path with education, uh, growth, personal development, professional development. Um, I, I can't tell you, and, and you know, I know insurance, and we try to dispel the image of the big bad insurance guy like you guys were talking about earlier, um, but it certainly is not that at all. If you ever had the opportunity to attend our annual convention, um, you know, it's certainly an eye-opening experience to see the diverse uh, group of individuals who are just totally dedicated to what we do day in and day out. I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't turn back time. Yeah, I mean, I know how difficult it can be, you know, upon graduation and identifying, you know, what is it I want to do uh, with my career. Um, so I hope today we opened another door for you, um, another door in terms of uh, opportunity, uh, and I hope we gave you some, some really good information in terms of what the industry can provide and some of the direction you can take to, to really pursue a career in this industry. Uh, and again, I, I'd be very much open to some questions uh, after, the, after the panel. And uh, closing remarks is uh, insurance industry is an excellent industry and uh, there's uh, lots of opportunities we have and I would say that the opportunities are unlimited and once you get into the insurance industry and I can guarantee you that you will never uh, head back to any other uh, industry to work. That's guaranteed. I think you can get into many areas of the industry from, um, you know, every task, everything you think about does tie into some insurance. So, you know, Package yourself and be ready so an interviewer will want you and want that second interview with you. It's there. Um, you know, I know our company and all the companies here seem to be hiring all along. So, you know, it's out there. Just go get it. Absolutely. Great. And I, I really think that that's, that's some good closing thoughts in terms of how to position yourself, package yourself, give some consideration to. Um, knowing that it's a career pathway, that there are choices and options, do your research. Think about how can I position my skill sets in a way that are going to be really attractive to employers? And also, how can I manage my reputation and manage my, my professionalism early on in my career? Um, even from the positions that you hold over the course of the summer, managing those employer relationships making sure that they're ready to be references, those that you hold as positions throughout the year, um, and able to speak to your strengths and attributes. Um, each of those um, individuals is going to be an ally in the next steps of your career. Um, one piece that I, I know that we um, wanted to touch on today as well, and I'll, and I'll just give you a, a final thought on it, is thinking through, okay, what do I need to do in terms of next steps? What are the next things that I need to think about in terms of connecting to the industry? There are lots of job sites that you can start your search on and that are specific to the industry. Insuranceworks.ca is one of them, as well as iHire.ca. We also would really encourage you to take a look at the Career Connections website. That information will give you, again, the occupational profiles, but we also do have a job site that employers use regularly um, in terms of posting positions. The other thing to consider in, um, is, as well, when you apply to the industry, you may be asked to complete something called a background check. Mm -hmm. And Joe, I know that we didn't get a chance to talk about it before yeah. in the panel, but do you just want to go over that process? Sure, sure. Um, most organizations, uh, even outside of the insurance industry, will do uh, extensive background checking for um, a potential uh, a potential employer. Uh, I can tell you that uh, for our organization and a lot of the uh, other other um, organizations in the industry, um, here's some of the things we'll actually take a look at. I mean, uh, standard practice is a criminal background check for 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 all potential employees in this industry. I think that's pretty standard. Um, when it comes to the references, I think what you'll find is that you know, usually employers are looking for two standard business references. Uh, ideally from individuals that you've reported to in the past, so a supervisor, manager, uh, that sort of thing. Um, you know, for those of you who maybe haven't had the chance to, to have employment just yet, um, you know, we're perfectly fine uh, with the professors, uh, you know, TAs, individuals that you've worked with from an academic perspective who can really sort of comment on, uh, on your skills and abilities as a student. Uh, we've, we've, we've had that done before. Um, 
and uh, that's that's pretty much what we'll look at. I mean, I know some employers will look at employment verification, so uh, really going back and seeing, um, you know, confirming that you have worked at certain uh, certain places that you've you've put on your resume, as well as an education verification. So you know, did you graduate from York University in 2000? 11, I guess, for you. Um, so those are some of the standard things. Uh, in terms of references, though, I can't you know, stress enough how important it is to make sure that um, at, it's at least from the last place that you've worked um, and that uh, you are getting uh, references from uh, actual managers or supervisors um, who have managed you in the past. That's probably the best route to go. Great. Um, as well, what I encourage you to do in terms of thinking about your next steps is who do I know in the industry who I can connect with? Make that first networking contact, and, and you, you now know four professionals. So we're going to make sure that you have a chance to talk to them in a networking session. And then we'll also make sure that you know that Career Connections has a roster of 300 of these folks who go out and connect with the industry. So if you're thinking, hmm, I don't have somebody within my six degrees of separation who is an insurance professional, I'm sure you all do. Um, but if, if you're having some trouble tracking them down, please do email us um, with questions and we'd be happy to connect you with an industry professional. Once you've done your research and really decided which pathway, again, we'll be able to help you in terms of finding how to get connected to the industry. Great. Are there any other final questions from you before we break for networking? Fantastic. Thank well, thank you very much thank for you. joining thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you to the panel. Thank you.